Hello, my name is Ralf Klinat. I'm looking for 120,000 pounds investment for 20% share in my company. I'd like to introduce you to our invention, Funky Cones. It's an electronic physical activity game for children that can be played by individuals all the way to teams of up to 50. I'd like to quickly demonstrate how it works. In this game, you will see the cones lighting up in a random order. The player has to remember that order and then run between the cones, pressing them in that order. And it goes like this. That shows you that I've done it correctly and also shows the time. This is just one game of a whole booklet full of games we've developed for children, running games, ball games, competitive games. We've identified primary schools as our initial target market. In the last 12 months, we've also learned that the same product can actually deliver benefits to the sports market. As I stand here today, I've spent all my money <laughs> and loads of late nights uh, in my garage producing 15 sets of those myself, which I've now all sold. I've got no more to sell, and that's why I need investment. Before I um, close my presentation and open for questions, would anyone like to have a go with the cones and try it out for themselves? No. Okay, thank you very much. An awkward end to a business like Pitch from German-born Ralph Klinert. In exchange for 20% equity, he needs £120,000 to start mass-producing his prototype electronic game. Duncan Bannatyne drills straight down into the numbers. Ralph, my name is Duncan. Hello, Duncan. Mm -hmm. You said you'd produce 15 sets yeah. and mm -hmm. sold them. Yeah. What okay. did it cost you, man? Let's look at the finances. Okay. Um, it cost me £480 to make one set, and I sell them for £950 to schools. So you had a profit of seven thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, tell me how you're going to spend mm -hmm. one hundred and twenty thousand um, pounds. Forty-five thousand pounds will be for uh, custom tooling. Yep. Uh, Twenty-five thousand pounds would be for the design of that tool. Uh, Thirty-two for marketing and sales um, resources, and eighteen thousand of the remaining hundred twenty would be for continued IP protection. Uh, uh, Ralph, yeah. um, you want seventy thousand pounds to make tooling, which is preposterous mm. it's it, it just does there's 15 grand worth of tooling here mm. max well that these were the um, the costs that were quoted to me by tool makers and plastic manufacturers for that size have of you been holding down a job while you've been doing all this um, not for the last five years now that's my full-time job How have you lived well by by selling those and no, also, no. So also you haven't made any money yeah, selling I know, you made 7,000 quid I'm living very low-key and also, I was um, very fortunate in getting um, government, government grants. More taxpayers' money. H how much did the government give you? Uh, 148,000 altogether. If anybody else comes in front of me and says they've had money off the government, it's taxpayers' money, for some ridiculous business venture, I'm going offshore. I'm sick and tired of seeing the money being wasted, the taxpayers' money. And grants for businesses that are just worthless. Frustration from Duncan Ballantyne. An uncomfortable moment for the entrepreneur. Will Deborah Meadle offer him some respite? Ralph, hi, I'm Deborah. I don't share Duncan's rant on grants. I think grant system is a very good system to have to get product off the ground. Mm -hmm. What worries me is you won't care if I hand my £120,000 over because it's not your money. And when it is your money, I tell you, Ralph, it feels a lot, lot different in driving costs down because I think if you didn't get £150,000 from the grant system, we'd be sitting here with that costing a lot less money to produce. In the opposite, I, I would actually like to argue that I've been very economical with the money I was given to get to the point where I am. Well, you haven't. And yeah. Can I tell you, Ralph, you haven't? Because Theo and I know nothing at all about this tooling, but gut feeling, I'm thinking, God, if somebody gave me, a, somebody quoted to me £70,000, you know, ridiculous. Okay. So I'm afraid, Ralph, I'm out. OK, thank you. It's a first setback for Ralph as Deborah Meaden walks away from the deal. 
and James Khan is ready to declare his position. For a guy who's a bright, intelligent person to come in here with four cones with lights on there and expect me to value your business at £600,000, Mm -hmm. You must think we're mad. You must do. Well, the valuation is based on investment I've received f before from private investors. Uh, altogether, £55,000. Mm -hmm. So after £200,000, you sold seven grand. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, Ralph. I'm out. Ralph, you talked about primary schools. Mm -hmm. When my grandfather was a boy, mm -hmm. it might have been intriguing to see lights flashing in different ways. Mm -hmm. But I don't really think that when children now look at technology, mm -hmm. that's what they're thinking about. I think it's advanced way beyond that. Only a complete idiot would invest in this, so I'm out. Thank you very much. Two more dragons out, and it looks as though Ralph's time in the den could be brief. But Peter Jones is looking intrigued. Ralph, I'm Peter. Ralph, what have you done? What's your background? My background is electronic engineering, uh, which uh, I came to Scotland over to finish my first degree ten years ago. I is this your first business? It is, yes. yes. Okay. And have you, you designed or created anything before? Um, not to that extent, no, I haven't. No. No. Mm -hmm. um, you said it costs about four or five hundred pounds to make, nine hundred pounds to sell. At the moment, yes. Your market is primary schools then? Uh, not just primary schools, that, that's our initial target market. I have interest from football clubs uh, to use as a training tool for, from Premier League all the way up to the grassroots. I, I like it. Um, I think it is interactive, I think it clearly is fun. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking, you know, would my kids play it? I think they would. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is clearly the cost of the product. Mm -hmm. I think there's your barrier. Why did you come in at such a high rate? Look, what, I'll tell you what I'm frustrated with is if I can find a way to get the cost down mm -hmm. and you hadn't asked for such a large amount of money, mm -hmm. I'd actually be interested. At last, some let up for the level headed entrepreneur, but still no offer of the £120,000 investment he badly needs. Now, Theo Pafitis wants to interrogate Ralph on his costs. How much would you be able to make these for if you were mass producing them? Mm -hmm. um, we are confident we can make them for £175, as you see them in front of you, instead of 480 And I've got the plans already for it. That yeah. still sounds high. That's, that's still based on just a volume of 1,000 a thousand units. So if you can get it up to a reasonable volume and uh, get the manufacturing done abroad, uh, I'm sure we can get it down to far lower than that. It's an understated revelation, but a potentially important one nonetheless. Will the opportunity for reduced production costs be too little, too late for Peter Jones? Ralph, here's my, here's my thought about it all. I've clearly said I like it. Do I like where you've been trying to push and where you, where you see the market? No. OK. Do I see huge, huge potential in other areas? Absolutely. On a potential global scale. OK. I would be willing to offer you £60,000 mm -hmm. for 25%. An unexpected turnaround, perhaps, but Ralph now has an offer. But it is for half the money, and strict rules state he must receive the full amount he's asking for, or he walks away with nothing. And there's just one dragon left. This only works, in my mind, if the price comes down. Mm -hmm. So, I too going to make you an offer. £60,000. Mm -hmm. OK. 25%. Ralph now has a complete offer, but at more than double the equity he wanted to give away. Are you at any, in any way prepared to negotiate on the equity share you requested? Because half of what I've worked for up until this point is just a large chunk. And I would be far happier and... if you could approach Ralph. that a little bit further. Ralph. If this is a great success, mm -hmm. your shareholding 
is hugely valuable and it'll make no difference. If it fails, we've all lost money mm -hmm. and it's made no difference. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do agree, of course. So... Would you be happy to go lower with your share, or is that your final offer? You're making life difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to think that potentially without that backing, without that new direction, and without the funding that you desperately need, that your concept just becomes one of the thousand cones that we see out on the roads every day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm happy to accept your offer. Hey! <laughs> Ralph well directed the one with an easy journey, but he walks away with two well-connected dragon investors and the £120,000 he badly needs. What a great deal! That is going to be so fun. Well, very well done, Ralph. I mean, it didn't seem like it was going to have that outcome all the way through, did it? No, not at all. No, uh, I saw it dropping halfway through it, so um, very, very pleased. Very well, pleased. I mean, mm -hmm. Duncan was obviously pretty dismissive. Yeah, pretty uh, direct and uh, dismissive words from him, but, uh, well. Now, they made their offer. Did you come close to turning them down? Um, to be frank and honest, no. <laughs> Right. <laughs> very well done, Ralph. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.